Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Think your job is forever? Think again, says our guest, Inez Temple, author of You Incorporated. Inez, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Bill, for inviting me. I'm very, I'm very happy to be here. Inez, um, did I read, uh, right at the beginning of your book, you've written over 800 articles on work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are many videos, many articles. Yes, over 800. So I guess we can trust anything you're saying. You know what you're talking about. I've been working and helping thousands and thousands of people to find new jobs, change jobs for better positions. Uh, I mean, I've been doing that for the last 25 years, and this is my life, this is my work, this is my passion. So, yes. <laughs> now, I, it, it, I guess we can safely say to our audience and to all of us something we're seeing. Is lifetime employment something from the past? Yes, it is. I mean, nobody can ever think about uh, making plans over lifetime employment. That, that's done. That's gone. I mean, if there are some lucky people that, you know, may retire from their actual job, they're lucky people. But none of us should expect to do that. And it doesn't happen anymore. Right. And I guess uh, we watch the old movies or something on TV or, or in a, the theater. It's nice to see someone getting the gold watch after maybe 25 or 40 years or whatever it is. But uh, I, that's kind of a thing of the past. And if you find somebody like that, it really is um, something ancient, I guess. Right. Yes, uh, because there is n it doesn't exist a, a company, an organization in the whole world that can uh, promise us a lifetime employment. I mean, there not a single organization or company that can guarantee their own survival, or their own continuity in time, on time. So how can they uh, seriously uh, pro make a promise that they are not sure they will be able to come? So every job has a, a time limit. It can be 10 days, it can be... 27 years. It doesn't matter, but every single job will end unless we die in the office, which is actually very sad. So, you know. You have a, a saying, and I think it begins chapter one. You start out by saying the only constant is change. And I guess in a way that should make us feel good because that's the world we're in. It's going to happen. It's not necessarily uh, a sign that we are in, in not adequate, that we're uh, ill-prepared. It's just the way the world is going to work now. We're not talking about 40-year jobs or 25-year jobs. Most of them are going to be much more shorter terms. Is, is that the message? That's the message. Absolutely, you're right. And uh, and for that, we have to make a, a, a shift in our paradigms. Uh, and, uh, people know that. Everybody has heard about that. But even to this day, every single day, we, we get people in our outplacement businesses that are, are coming from large organizations, small organizations, and Inside their, you know, their hearts, they were really believing that they were going to stay in this company forever because they liked their job, they liked the people, they liked the company because they thought that they, they were doing a great job and, I'm, and many of them are doing a great job. But that doesn't have to do anything with the reality that every single job will end uh, and not necessarily when we are waiting it to end or when we want it to end. So we have to be always prepared to 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 jump to our next position and to be ready to do that in a, in, a, in the better con in, 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 in as good conditions as, as we can. Now, companies over the past 20 years, in your opinion, and you've written all these articles and this is certainly your area of expertise, is this a good thing? I know when I go into an office, I like to see the same people there. Uh, there's continuity. They'll say hello to me by my first name. If they've been there long enough, they'll ask personal questions. My children, my dog, uh, did I like my new car or whatever? Um, is that a good thing for the companies? And is it actually beneficial or is it taking away an element that maybe we've lost over time? Um I, I guess that uh, nowadays it's uh, more and more evident that, um, you know, both companies and or, or we, the people that work in those companies, have to make sure that the, the relationship w will last as long as it is convenient for both of us. I know it sounds very, uh, very strong, uh, uh, but it's true. I mean, if if I, as an employee, I'm not happy anymore, I'll 
try to find a, a better place to work. And the same in the other in, in the other sense, you know, if a company is not happy with the way I'm performing or the those abilities that I have, they will replace me for somebody that can do it better or a machine that could do it better and cheaper than I, I do. And so companies have have to work harder and harder to retain their best talent. And we have to work harder and harder to have the abilities that the uh, job market requires. So to be able to go outside to the market if we want to or we need to and and still be employable to have a strong demand for our services to have a very good personal brand. So I, I guess we really have to say just what the statement you said, uh, is it working for both of us? Am I producing more sales for the company or more accounting records or whatever my task is? And is the company happy with me and making money on me? Because if they're not, why keep me around? So is, is that the kind of guideline we should look at? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And that's why it's so important, Bill, to not only uh, uh, keep a good track record of all the accomplishments, the accomplishments that you have and all the value that you added and keep that in your CV. Just remember, CVs are not uh, tools that we need to have ready when we are looking for a new job. Uh, CVs are our tool to make, to to keep good track of our career advancements, our new skills, whatever accomplishments accomplishments we are getting into, so offering the company. So uh, it's very important to be clear, what is that our boss wants from me? How I'm going to be measured? What's the type of work that I need to deliver? How that work will add value to the company? So we have to be, we have to shift our paradigm, our mentality, as, as we were all uh, independent producers or independent and workers. It doesn't matter how we are paid. We have to be clear that if we only have one client uh, and that's to be in a very risky or very vulnerable position to have only one client, that only one client that we have, the one that's paying for my salary, has to be very content with our work, with our performance, with our abilities, with the way, with the attitude and with everything that we produce. And so as, it's, it's, it, no, I'm yes. sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought you... Uh, I, I, at this point in the show, I just wanted to let our listeners know that if they're just tuning in, they're listening to Inez Temple, I-N-E-S, second word of her name, Temple. Her book is You Incorporated. And you're listening to Inez on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Inez, can you tell us where can we get the book? And is there a website we should know more about? Sure. Thank you very much for asking. The book is everywhere, both in digital outlets like Amazon and all the others, and also uh, in in your local bookstore. Uh, it's everywhere. I mean, uh, and uh, there is uh, my web page is uh, www.inestemple.com, and there you can find more information about the book and. Uh, and we'll it's, ask you that all later. Over the place. We'll yeah. ask you for that later in the show because this is uh, something that everybody should know about. We all feel bad. I mean, if we're let go or just told our services are no longer needed, it's it's like taking all the blood out of our body. And yet, this is the way of the world now. It doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person. I'm a bad person. I'm incompetent or anything else. It's just a certain company doesn't need our services anymore, and probably. Another company does. Now, you mentioned a great point before. You said when you're writing out a resume or a curriculum, vitae, um, list 25 accomplishments. And that stuck with me when I was going through your book. Because usually we would say, oh, I worked for so-and-so store, and then I was an assistant manager, and then I was the manager or the foreman. But you say, don't list positions, list accomplishments. Why is that so important? Uh, because, I mean, positions are responsibilities, uh, which are fine. You know, it's good to put them down in your CV. But uh, uh, we need to be very clear. What's the value that we added? How do we contribute it, contribute it from our position to the, the general well-being of the organization? So accomplishments will show. Uh, let me ma- give you a very simple example. Let's say that I'm in charge of selling cookies. I love the idea of selling cookies. And uh, I can say that I was responsible for selling cookies in the north part of the city. Or I can say that being in charge of selling cookies in the north part of the city, you know, I was able to increment uh, sales uh, revenue by 35% and op- I open uh, 12% more of uh, outlets or I develop a strong relationship to um, I don't know 15 per- 15% of my clients who were also buying now uh, different 
cookies. You know, you know what I mean? It's important to say, what did I do at work that created value, that was well-liked, that was well-received? And that because makes so much with, sense uh, when I was talking to people about that, because those skills might be transferable, and I would much rather know what you did and your accomplishments, because some people just tend to accomplish a lot. They're, they're doers. They achieve. And I, I think that's a great point. That's something I'm definitely keeping out of this book. We always tell our audience there should be one or two takeaways from every show. And definitely that's one of them, that if you're looking for a position, list your accomplishments. It lets your new employer know what you've been doing, the things you've been able to achieve. And it also keeps you working harder because you're going to want more accomplishments for that next job and the next job. And it's important that all those accomplishments that are listed in your CV have to be um, numbered. They have to be percentages or amounts because people tend to believe more in numbers. I always say that people believe more in Excel than they believe the word. <laughs> so they need numbers are, are, are very good and make uh, a great uh, advancement for our credibility. And also it's important, Bill, to keep on registering those, those uh, accomplishments week by week, month by month. What I see is a lot of people that uh, are in the need to create a new CV and they start doing archaeology uh, inside their own papers, trying to remember what did I do seven years ago? How how did I value, you know, three years ago? Have to be done uh, as a matter of discipline, you know, every, as I said, every month, every, every couple of months at least. So we almost should keep a log. Some people we might call it a diary, but if we make an accomplishment when we're 24, we may forget that by 30, or it might be an accomplishment today, but we're doing a lot of things. But we should really write it down someplace. Is that what you're saying, or keep a record of it? Exactly. And you know what? It's also very good to do that, because when you start reading your accomplishments, you start uh, uh, taking note that what abilities, uh, skills do you have that uh, uh contribute to create that value over and over again. So those are your strong points. So are, those are the things that you have to concentrate in doing even better. And those are the things that you were going to be speaking about in, in, on, on an interview when you're asked about your strength. And because, not only because for sure you have them, but you have all the the the, the accomplishments to reinforce the, the reinforce the point that these are your strengths because I did that with these numbers. I, I contribute the other way because I was able to sell more cookies in my territory than, than anybody else. And I was number one salesperson for three weeks on a row. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're, you're adding, that's what it has to be registered and uh, with numbers. I think that's a great CV. approach. I love that. And uh, I, I definitely would be more interested in that person because it would give us something to talk about. I would know their skills rather than that someone else made them a manager because they could be a manager of two people or of a very small department. And, of course, it doesn't take much uh, management ability to do that. Whereas if they give me their achievements, that tells me a lot about them. And you said something very important, Bill. Uh, that shows how transferable your skills are. And uh, 75% of the people that we help to find new positions in our outplacement programs uh, fa change sectors. So they, they are able to, to change, to, to export their uh, abilities to different sectors. That makes them much more employable. That makes them also that make them also uh, more uh, capable of understanding new sectors. Because just remember, we are on the verge of a huge transformation in the, in, in the job market with all coming with inter, uh, artificial intelligence, the digitalization of so many processes. Uh, all of that is, is bringing a, a, a huge change and we need to be a, ahead of that. We need to future-proof our careers by really being ready now about where would I work next if I didn't have my job or my sector is changing, what will I be able to add to a different sector in the near future? That's something we start to be thinking today, not tomorrow. Another great today. point. And as we want to find out more from you, but at this point in the show, we like to remind our listeners that you're listening to The Secrets of Success. My name is Bill Horan. The show is produced at the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll be right back after this brief break. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick and proud aunt. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing. But not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. One in six. 
That little girl sitting alone at the playground, she can't play like the other kids. She doesn't have the energy because she's hungry. School lunch will be her only meal today. It breaks my heart that this is the reality in our country, but it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. This food is then provided to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about using your imagination, learning, and having fun. These children shouldn't have to miss out on simply being a kid because they're hungry. To find out how you can help end childhood hunger in your community, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back. You're listening to The Secrets of Success. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and today we're speaking with Inez Temple, author of You Incorporated. Inez, um, how many times will the average person switch jobs uh, in their careers now? They say that somebody who's starting uh, his or her career now will be changing at least seven times. And four of those seven times, four will be involuntary changes. <laughs> so, that's in other words, the company will tell us that we're changing jobs. We're not. T- that's a nice way of saying yeah. we're not telling them, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, um, something I was surprised at, and, and I want to see if this is correct, who um, really uh, has the higher risk? Is it higher up the line, you know, the more important people, so to speak, or the lower uh, in rank people, the, um, you know, the per hour workers or the lower staff workers? Um it depends on the sector. I will tell you, in general, the higher you move up in the uh, pyramid, the, the, the more at risk you, your position always is. More at risk. Yes. So that's higher but, risk. That's what surprised me, that uh, I thought as you go up there, the boss is usually, you think of the boss as being safe and the worker gets fired, but now it's the higher you go up, the more risk, right? Yes. And depending on the sectors, because of all the changes that are coming with technology, some sectors will be affected also at the clerical level positions, uh, where automatization is coming, artificial intelligence is substituting a lot of positions. That's where we need to start understanding our sector, how some of the chores that I'm doing currently can be uh, taken over by machines. And if that the case, that's the case, we start to mo- be the first to move out that sector. We don't want to be the last out because then it will be much harder to be- find a new position because there will be a lot of people from my sector in the market. So, Has, I, I, Go ahead, please. No, you go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, thank you. I, I didn't mean to <laughs> cut you, you off. Um, has the definition of the word success changed in the workplace? Is there a new definition for success? I, I think that's a great question, Bill. I think, yes, there is a new definition for success. And it's uh, success nowadays is something that's uh, identified very personally. There is not a formula for success for everybody. There is not even one formula for uh, each one. I mean, I mean I'm... I said it wrongly. Which one of us has our own formula of success that cannot be shared? So it's success is not what my parents want from me or my partner wants from me or my children wants from me. It's what I want from life. The level of satisfaction, the level of money, the ability to do things, to learn things, to uh, acquire things, to to uh, go places. So that's why uh, I always say that's so important that we start uh, our career planning by sitting down and really trying to understand what is that what I really want to do with my life, what is that I really want to do with my work life, and what is my own definition of success? What's the combination of all those factors that used to be important that resonate inside me, not anybody else but me? And uh, that's key. Now, throughout your book, Inez, you mentioned that the saying, you need to stay in the game. What does that mean? How would you explain that to someone? Uh, What I see a lot, uh, Bill, is complacency. Uh, 
a lot of people that think that because I've been in this company for the last 21 years, I'm safe. Or because I'm, you know, my boss really likes me, I'm safe. Or because this company is making a lot of money or it's, it's a large uh, multinational, I'm safe. My message is no one is safe. I mean, the only way to feel safe, to be safe, is to be very employable, to have a high level of employability, which means that if I need to find a new job, I will be able to find it because I, my skills are up to date. I understand my job market. I have a good reputation and a great personal brand because I, I have contacts that will be acting as as my buy, as my sellers, uh, my personal mark. Uh, brand sellers in the market that's the only way to feel safe it's not because i have one company client that buys my services every month i'm safe because i'm capable of getting new clients if i need to or if i want to now inez once again i'd like our audience to know if they're just tuning in our guest today is Inez, I-N-E-S, Temple, T-E-M-P-L-E. Her book is You Incorporated. And Inez, will you tell us where we can get the book and a website that uh, would give us more information? Sure. Uh, The book can be found anywhere, Amazon, um, Google Books, uh, uh, iBooks from Apple, or any uh, uh, of the local bookstores, the large chains and the small ones. It's everywhere. And, um, and and as I'd like people to know that if they're hearing this show, first of all, they, we want them to know they're listening to the show. It's The Secrets of Success on 90.3 WHPC. And if they didn't get all the information or missed part of the show, they can go to nccradio.org and look under podcasts for The Secrets of Success and hear the, the um, whole podcast of the show and then go out and get the book. This is important for everyone's work life, whether you're in high school right now and graduating college or or if you're in your 50s and 60s, because most of us are ashamed or upset if we lose a job. And really today, as you mentioned, the word is not uh, unemployed. It's in transition. We're moving on to another position, and uh, that's just the way things are. Now, you talked about employability, and in your book you say employability anchors stability. Can you explain what that means? Yes. Uh, What I mean with employability is that... uh, it's our ability to have uh, uh, the attitude, the right uh, skill of the, uh, the right set of skills, uh, and the right amount of contacts, and uh, and the desire to perform well in the market. That will create a, an excellent brand for ourselves and will give us the opportunity to be able to have a, a good personal brand, as I said, and a high level of demand. Just like any business, and our career is our best business. In order to be successful, we need demand, demand for our services. So what we have to have is a high level of employability to have a high level of demand for our services. That will give us the security, if we could, if that's how we can call it, that we all want uh, in able to plan for our future, to get a mortgage, to find a car, to buy a new car, or, or do whatever we want to do with our lives. And from what it I'm all hearing, on, uh, on us, not from an employer. That's our responsibility, not our employers. From what I'm hearing too, from you, uh, we better keep up on the newest things because, as you said, um, if we're just at a company because they, meaning the boss, likes us, well, the boss may be gone in two years or a shorter time. The company may be merged, sold out, etc., and the company. Company that we liked because it was a small local company may now be part of a multi conglomerate and a lot of new rules, new organization. And of course, our job may be a thing of the past. So if we don't keep up, we're going to be the one most likely to be eliminated. I guess, <laughs> and, and not only not only our position might be eliminated, but if we are our, our skill sets is not up to date, if we haven't invest in our own profile. We, it will take much, much longer for us to find a new job. And that's not a position where any of us want, wants to be. So we need to be really on the tip of our toes all the time, thinking, what do I need to develop? What do I need to learn? What new skills uh, everybody else is getting that I'm not getting? What do I need to learn? What do I need to develop fast? Uh, uh, how much faster can I learn to learn? What I, do I need to be reading? And I understand that's a lot. 
we all have a lot of pressure, work, family obligations, and all of that. But this is our, our most important business. This is the business that pays our bill, <laughs> our bills, our, our career pays for our, our life. So we need to be very strategic, and uh, and especially Bill, and this is important. We we really need to make an audit of our own attitude. Uh, a lot of people don't have the right attitude at work and they say that no no i'm not going to work any harder because i don't like my boss or i don't like the company or they are not paying me enough so what what they're doing they're, they're doing harakiri to their own professional life because they are not giving out their best uh, job the best effort so they are not creating a good uh, personal brand and that will come back as a longer transition process if out of uh, the job or be bypassed for new um, promotions if it's the case. Uh, um, so, Inez, I, I just want to emphasize to our audience, you said to audit our attitude, and I think that's another great takeaway. It's two words, simple to remember. We could tape that to our telephone or on our desk or just on a notepad, but every day, audit your attitude. How are you treating the people around you? Are you the one they want or are you the one they'd like to get rid of first? Because if, if the people around you... Uh, dislike you, the word I think is going to get to the boss very quickly, and it's a lot easier to get rid of you rather than have the rest of the people angry or upset. So, uh, another great point. Yes, and you know, Bill, there's one thing that tends to be uh, overpassed, but a a lot of us, when we are working, and you just mentioned it, is attitude. Because attitude makes all the difference in the world, the way others see you uh, the way others refer to you, the, the way others remember you. And attitude is something that we can change in a single minute. That's the only thing that we can change immediately. And uh, uh, and it's very important that we become very honest with ourselves and really think that we are paid to, to, to give out our best attitude possible. And attitude will do wonders for our career even more even more than accomplishments sometimes and it's not that do we have to be uh, hypocritical or nice just to be nice but uh, if we make uh, a promise to ourselves in order to develop a stronger personal brand we have to be very clear that attitude has to be positive and nice and open and transparent um, and authentic all the time. So that's key for our, 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 the success of our career and our personal brand. Inez, I think if anybody uh, is not aware of what you said in our show today, they should get hold of the, your book, You Incorporated. It's a real wake-up call, and at any point, it's better to know about this than to find out the hard way when someone comes by and say, we don't need you anymore because we have a freelancer or we're changing the way we're doing business. Uh, Inez, please tell us once again where we can get the book and the website we should look for. Yes, the book is everywhere on all the digital outlets and all the digital stores, Amazon, iBooks, uh, Apple Store, everywhere, and all the large and, and small also bookstores. And my webpage is uh, www.inestemple.com. Uh, Easy enough and to remember, Inez, thank you so much for being with us. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but we'd like to remind our audience that you've been listening to The Secret Sons of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.